Now, if you get more advanced and spend more time on working with models, you can get something. Let me show you. Take the camera off its tripod real quick. See this thing right here? That is a lab quality power supply. It is a precision DC power support source. It will go to three decimal places. So I can put 1.001 volts on my project if I so desire. I got this thing on eBay for 40 bucks. Now, only buy one of these if you're gonna do a lot, a lot of electronics. Lighting models, I don't think that's necessary because you can use your wall work to test your circuits. Okay, this thing, I play around a lot. I've been trying to learn something about basic electronics. That's why I bought it. And I don't use that to light my models with. Not at all. I use that simply to play around with and test with. Okay? So anytime I'm doing a lighting circuit here on the desktop, that's what's powering it. Not a wall wart. Alright? And again, I got that on eBay for 40 bucks. That. So for some of you that's a lot of money but if you're going to be doing a lot of this it's way more convenient because I can adjust the voltage on that precisely anytime I want speaking of voltage I'm sure some of you saw what this sitting on the desktop this is a voltmeter okay this is a high-end voltmeter it's not a cheapie do not buy a cheap one they are inaccurate and cause you all sorts of grief I wouldn't buy a good one now a couple of things to look for on a good one Okay, batteries are not dead on this. That is a continuity tester. If I take the two ends of the probes, okay, maybe that is not the continuity tester. That's a continuity tester. That tells me I have a connection, that tells me I don't. Okay, one of the reasons I like that is I can test my circuit before I power it up and make sure it has a connection all the way through. If there's a short, there won't be a beep. Okay, this one has an ohm meter on it. Now, one of the reasons why I went with a higher end one is the ohm meter here will auto adjust. The cheap ones do not. So if you're trying to figure out what the resistance is on a resistor and you don't want to read the resistor barcodes, we'll talk about that with LEDs. You can just run the, this across the resistor, the two ends of the resistor, and it will read something, okay? So this is fully adjustable. It will do voltage. It'll tell me what the voltage is. It will, it does alternating current. It does direct. I can plug this into the wall and make sure I'm getting the proper voltage out of the wall. G points you can't do that with. So this is just an all around good voltage meter. This was not cheap, okay? If you're only gonna get into this on a temporary basis and you want one of these, I'm not saying you need one. Because what I'm gonna do is kind of cook the books on this one. I'm gonna say, tell you exactly what to get you can just put it together following what I do. So you won't need one of these. I'm going to need one of these to get everything right and then tell you what to do. So you don't need to get one of these only if you're going to get into this and start playing around a lot. Okay, it's very useful if you're playing around and you're trying to track down what the heck's going on. Why is this thing not lighting up? This can help you track that down. That's why I have it. Okay? And that's why I have a good one. I got a cheap one I just don't like. Alright, up next when you are lighting models you're going to heavily modify the model you're going to drill holes you're going to cut channels for wires you're going to do all sorts of things you ordinarily wouldn't do so what you need is a pin vise okay now i've got four or five pin vises this is just the first one i found you know, most of you have seen these a lot of you have them simply because they're handy for drilling out rivets and all sorts of other things on aircraft models and normal models, car models, tanks, and draw out the barrel on a tank. I have indexed drill bit set here. Okay. Now, if you get tired of drilling them by hand, this little guy right here, you can hear it running. Um, I bought a fiber optic Enterprise D years upon years ago. It was the first lit model I did. This came with it. You can find the AMT Ertl lighting kit on eBay from time to time. It usually goes for about 20 bucks and includes one of these. The drill bit is not exchangeable. You can't take that off. You can't change that drill bit out for something else. But that drill bit is probably the precise size I'm going to use for some of the fiber optics in the Millennium Falcon. 
so that's why I have this guy out. Another thing you can do to save your top skin is it to me a handy drill. Okay, this thing isn't all that expensive, but it does have some drawbacks. You can't, you can only use certain size drill bits in this chuck. It won't let you use every single drill bit I've got here. Some of the smaller drill bits just won't work, the larger ones won't work. It's just the only intermediate range on this. But it does help save your insanity from drilling millions of holes with this thing. Okay, so we've covered drilling holes. We don't have much left. All right, now, test leads. Gonna need some test leads. They just make it easier to connect your power supply to what you're doing. Having these kind of clips on the end are useful for certain things. Let's zoom in so you guys can see what the end of that clip looks like. It just makes things useful for doing certain types of projects. All right, I gotta to zoom too close. That's part of my problem, but you can see it working there. Okay, let me back the zoom out a little bit because it wants to focus on everything but my test clip. There, you can see the wire coming out and it grabs hold of the wire and holds it. What I don't like about these things, they're pretty dang fragile. I blow through them pretty hard. The wires break inside them. They're made cheaply. The problem is, they're not cheap. A set of six or seven of these is $15 and they break. So what you can do is get yourself some old fashioned alligator clips these you can bind at the dollar store. Harbor Freight Tools sells a big kit of these for like three bucks. Cheap, cheap, cheap stuff. And you can make your own by just running your own wires into the alligator clips. So that's what I've started doing. Here's the wires on the end of my power supply over there so everyone can see. I use some alligator clips on the end of them. All right, speaking of wires, you're gonna need some wire. No way around it. Now, what I have here is I bought this at an electronics store. It was expensive, okay? And I'm trying to see what it says on it. Now, one thing about wire gauges is the higher the gauge, the lower the gauge number, the fatter the wire. So this is like 22, 25 gauge wire. It's telephone pickup wire. That's what it is. Okay, I got it. I got this spool on eBay for like three bucks. I bought this in my electronics store for ten. Just to show you, three on eBay, 10 from my electronics store. I went to eBay. From now on, I'm getting that stuff on eBay. I've also recently found, I think my, hard, my local big box hardware store sells this stuff for fairly cheap. I also think Harbor Freight Tool sells it for fairly cheap. Get yourself a couple of different colors, or you can get a spool of multi-strand, multi-colored, which isn't all that useful, but you can split it and get double your wire out of it. I got this at Radio Shack and I paid too much money for it there. I'm not a big fan of Radio Shack. They jack the prices up on stuff because they think they're the only game in town and they're not. Either you can also salvage wire out of old computer cables and stuff like that. Now let me talk about why I don't do that very often. That wire tends to be pretty brittle, okay? And I do mean pretty brittle when you get it out of there. It's copper, solid core. You want solid core, not multi-strand wire. Here's why. Multi-strand wire requires a lot more heat to solder. It's bulkier. And if you're doing something like an integrated circuit, you don't want multi-strand wire because you don't want to solder with a lot of heat. So that's why I'm going with solid core, 20 to 25 gauge wire. I just did telephone pickup wire, and that's what that is, okay? Now, once you're done soldering, you're gonna have to put some insulation on it. So what I have here is some shrink tube. All right, heat shrink tube. I got this in my electronic supplier store. I have this one at Harbor Freight Tools. The one at Harbor Freight Tools has lots of big sizes in it, not good. You want the small size stuff. That's why this is better. This has a few big sizes, but it has a ton of these smaller sizes, okay? Smaller sizes are perfect for what we do with model building. So don't necessarily look at Harbor Freight Tool. I bet you can find this on the internet at some place like DigiKey for really, really cheap. Instead of going to like Radio Shack or your local uh, electronics store. It doesn't hurt to go to your local electronics store and check their prices and see what they offer. But you gotta watch them. Sometimes they're way too expensive. Like a dollar something in LED when you can go on eBay and pay 10 cents in LED. 
just saying. We're going to talk about LEDs later and where to find them. All right. So we're almost done with this. We only have a couple more things to talk about. Another thing we're going to need is fiber optics. I'm not sure the sizes yet on the fiber optics. I just have a couple of different sizes here. Um, I got these at the fiber optics store. The website is thefiberopticsstore.com. Guys, prices are pretty reasonable if you buy them on the store. He does sell on eBay as well, but I think they're cheaper from the store. This is 50 feet of 1.5 millimeter. This is 100 feet of 0.25 millimeter. The 0.25 millimeter might be what I use in the cockpit to keep it with scale. I, I haven't pulled the cockpit yet, so I haven't decided that part yet. That's up for later this week to pull that cockpit and finalize my lighting plan. How many LEDs, how much fiber optic I'm going to use, what I'm going to use to light the engines with, that sort of thing. Okay, that'll be finalized by the end of this week. Um, did I leave anything out of this? Yes, I did. Speaking of shrink tube, you're going to need something to melt the shrink tube with. This is a heat gun. Okay, um, you can use the heat gun for softening resin parts. Be careful, you can burn the resin parts with this thing. It puts out too much heat. You can use it to shrink the heat tube. Don't need this, a cigarette lighter will work in its place. So if you don't want to spend the 12, 15 bucks for this at Harbor Freight Tools, get a cigarette lighter. They're cheap. Some of you already have them. I, I have one to light my grill with, one of, the, one of the long fireplace lighters. It'll do shrink tubing because sometimes I'm too lazy to go out and get this, so I use that. I think that covered all the basic tools and supplies we're going to need. So up next, I still need to make an LED video. I need to make, oh, I left one thing out. I knew I was leaving something out. This is something that is important, a breadboard. You can lay out your circuits on a breadboard and test it. I already have two circuits laid out. This is a 555 timer chip. This is a 4060 CMOS timer chip. We're gonna one of the videos I'm gonna make is going over the difference in these two timer chips, okay? And I will show you the differences, how to control the blink rates, all that fun stuff. I'll explain what a breadboard is there and how to work with a breadboard there. One of these will not hurt. They're ten bucks, fifteen bucks at your local. Um, Hobby shop, you don't need to get one this big. I got this one one this big because I wanted to set up a couple of circuits on it and play around. And I wanted to leave them like I have. So getting a breadboard would not be a bad thing. Not at all. All right. Now, if you're just going to stick LEDs in a ship, you don't need the breadboard. This is when you start getting into blinker circuits. So you can set up your circuit and make sure it's verify it's running. And again, they're not that expensive. I suggest you get one. So I think that pretty much covers all the basic tools we're going to need and what you're going to need to get going on this you might need a razor saw to cut some channels and stuff and cut out some plastic so you have places to put your LEDs a big ass drill might work a Dremel would help be helpful but most of you guys already have those tools so that's why I didn't go over them I'm just going over the things we need for electronics alright hope you enjoyed the video up next is soldering after soldering I'm going to do an LED video then I'm going to do a lighting product review and then I'm going to do the timing chip video. By then, I should have my lighting plan finalized. I'll talk that through with the video and list it on the website. And right about that time will be October 1st. We'll be ready to get going on the Millennium Falcon. So I hope to see you then.